Hello everyone, Ben Bowers of Drama Day here again. Been a while, I know, but um, I am filming this on the 24th of March, 2020. Um, and if you're watching this just after I've uploaded it, you'll know that uh, particularly from UK, we've just started a three week lockdown because of the coronavirus issue that's currently going on around the world. Um, it's possible that you might be watching this uh, in 10 years time and laughing to yourself going, oh yeah, that was that crazy time when everybody had to stay indoors and idiots were panic buying bucket loads of toilet roll for no particular reason. Or you might be watching it from a underground bunker and going, oh yeah, that was just before the dead started to reanimate and we had the zombie apocalypse. Whatever. It's weird times but I've got some time on my hands now because work has pretty much died a death that's actually a really bad way of putting it considering the situation but work is very very slow at the moment I've got a bit of time on my hands to do some videos so I thought why not take advantage so the one I'm going to do tonight is uh, this one um, you might recognize the bottle that it comes in if you've watched a lot of my other videos these bottles come from uh, my good whiskey drinking friend Andrew AP Butler um, and this particular one is Rampur Select uh, which is from India now I'm going to do these videos moving forward slightly differently I'm working on a little project as well so I'm hoping to tailor these videos videos so they, they're a bit quicker not so much me rambling um, apart from this bit at the start um, and basically I'll give you a guide to the distillery and then I'll give you the tasting notes but the guide to the distillery is going to be more structured there'll be more pictures and hopefully less of me kind of like trying to look down at notes from my little book of wonders um, and also just kind of stumbling and thinking about other things and going off in tangents so Rampour Select let's have a look at the history behind the distillery itself Rampur is named after the city it's located in, a city itself in the Uttar Pradesh region of northern India near the Nepalese border, at the base of the Himalayan mountains. Indeed, the label states it is a Himalayan single malt, as the distillery is located in the foothills of the iconic mountain range. Rampur is made at the Radiko Kaitan distillery, which was originally named the Rampur distillery when it was founded in 1943, which makes it the oldest distillery in India, to produce a variety of spirits such as vodka, gin and so on. They started producing malted barley spirit for blending in 1990, but it wasn't until 2016 that a single malt whiskey using the Rampur brand name launched to the export market. The distillery uses local six row barley, similar to Paul John Indian whiskey, which produces a lower yield but arguably more character due to the extra rows in the barley itself. And being sited in a mountainous region results in higher temperature fluctuations, causing the spirit to be more active in the cask which some claim results in faster maturation, making a three-year-old Indian whiskey supposedly the equivalent to an eight to 10-year-old scotch. Unfortunately, it also results in faster evaporation, meaning it will be difficult to achieve higher ages without losing too much of the stock to the elements. Right, so onto the dram itself. And uh, so as mentioned, Rampour Select. So this is a no age statement whiskey. Uh, it is single malt, it's non-chill filtered. Uh, and according to the blurb, it's matured in first fill bourbon casks. Um, you are looking at uh, Master of Malt. Oh, this is what the bottle looks like. Um, you're looking at Master of Malt selling this for 43.55 uh, and the whiskey exchange are selling it for 49.95. So this is pouring it in and this is basically a 25 mil measure in the bottle that Andrew's given it to me so good color on this let me just grab this bit of paper this bit of cloth even white tablecloth that I've got for my tasting events there we go uh, hopefully if I can get it to the light for you that's an empty glass <laughs> yeah it's really really clear so much so you can't even see it there we go that's better um, quite a deep kind of dark amber um, almost burnt orange I'd kind of go for really good color on that I'm really liking that uh, and apparently that's first fill bourbon cast as well so on the nose real bourbony elements coming through on that definitely it's um, it's rich and fruity there's a raisiny element to there but it's clearly not a sherry cask it's definitely more of that creamy vanilla character uh, I'm getting a bit of kind of almost glacé cherry on it maybe not that almondy character but there's a like a rich sweet dark um, black cherry feel to that it's sweet it's rich there's kind of red apple in there as well very bourbony in style though so I'm a big fat bourbon fan I'm probably gonna like this I, uh, I'm predicting I'm gonna like this but we'll see mm. oh it's also bottled at uh, 43 percent Mm. 
Mm, interesting. So really rich, full mouthfeel. Very creamy, quite thick, almost like um, double cream. Or when you take double cream and you whip it just before you start to get stiff peaks on double cream and the peaks are starting to fold backwards. But the cream is quite thick and unctuous, really has that rich mouthfeel to it. Um, there's definitely red apple. There's a really good kind of soft vanilla -y character to it. Not quite biscuity. I wouldn't go so far as apple pie and not even necessarily stewed apples. It doesn't quite have that sugary sweetness of, of that kind of equivalent, but there is a definite red apple vibe to it as well. Slightly floral. There's an underlying delicate floral edge to it that's really hard to describe. It's not quite honeysuckle. It's not it's not quite Parma Violet, but it's it's there and it's underlying this rich creaminess. It's very, very easy to drink. I'm loving that mouthfeel. There's a bit of sweet spice that comes through at the end. Cinnamon starts to dry out a little bit. White pepper starts to come through as it dries out. The finish, I wouldn't say, is too complex. If you're looking for something that's going to last and last and last, this does die off fairly quickly. What's there is good though, and I really like the first three quarters of this whiskey. The rich mouthfeel, that creaminess, the fruitiness that's there, that bourbony element, I would say, if you like bourbon, you're probably really going to like this. There is a lot of characteristics in really good American whiskey and bourbon that is in this. If I tried it blind, to be honest, I probably would say it's a bourbon or it's definitely American whiskey. I think if you were going to put it against something like Paul John, which is just behind me there, um, Paul John has a, a, a kind of honeycomb golden syrup element, which makes it a little bit more distinctive. Um, if I were to put Paul John on the tasting event, which I do work with those guys and I have them on tasting events quite often, you can normally tell which one the Paul John is compared to other American whiskies if you're doing like a blind world whiskey tasting. This doesn't quite have the distinctive element that makes, say, Paul John stand out. Amra, I still struggle with at times. At the moment in the UK market in particular, you're basically looking for Indian single malt as Paul John, Amra and Rampur. I prefer this to Amra, definitely. Um, but Paul John has a little bit more of a uh, individual character to it. However, you are not going to go wrong with this at all. I think the price point is more than fair. Um, I think it is eminently drinkable. I really, really like it because it's a flavour profile that I tend to go for anyway. So I would say if you like bourbon, if you like Paul John, definitely give this a go. I don't think you're going to be disappointed by it by any stretch of the imagination. But particularly if you like bourbon whiskies, you're really going to like this. This is very, very easy drinking. This would be cracking to put on a blind tasting um, for people that don't want to know New World whiskies and wouldn't touch an Indian whiskey with a barge pole. You could put this on a blind tasting and a lot of people would go, oh, that's really nice, really smooth and all this lot. Very, very easy to drink. That lack of complexity on the finish actually helps it kind of overcome people's um, objections to it. Um, I think a lot of people would go, oh, actually, it's very easy to drink and that would do it really uh, good justice. I would really like to try some more Rampour um, from the rest of the range where we're looking at kind of age statements or some of the more interesting bottlings that they've got. But the select is their entry level um, and I think it's very, very good. So I would heartily recommend it. So that is Rampour Select. And that is number 374 done. Uh, the plan was to get to 500, uh, and you never know with the um, quarantine uh, procedures that are currently in place, and the fact that we don't know quite how long this is gonna last for, and the fact that I have quite a few sample bottles um, to get through, I may even make that. So um, keep checking in. I promise to uh, try and get some videos done as quickly as I can, uh, and I will see you at the next one. Cheers.